In my last episode, I installed a DCC decoder in my locomotive. And some of the immediate feedback I got was, why didn't I show the end result and run that locomotive on my layout? Well, the answer is, I don't have DCC installed on my layout. So that's what I'm going to be working on in this video. I've got an Arduino Mega and a motor shield, and I'm going to be building a DCC EX command station. But before I get into that, I've got a little bit of layout work to do. I've got to lay down some track. So let's jump on into it. I need to get a programming track installed. And rather than have a dedicated track, I'm going to use a bit of track in the engine service area. With all the ties laid and painted, I'll start by installing the three-way switch I built several months ago. I'll join the rest of the track to the switch using isolating rail joiners so it is electrically isolated from the rest of the track. I'm only laying this front set of rails for now. I'll do the rest of the track later. If you'd like to learn more about how I lay my track, click on the link in the upper right hand corner. Next, I'll solder some feeders on the programming track. and the three-way switch. And then I got them connected to the bus. Although I ran feeders for the frogs, I don't have anything to wire them to at the moment. Now I can build my DCC EX command station. I'm using an Arduino Mega and the Arduino Motor Shield. The Arduino runs all the software for DCC-EX, but it can't handle the voltage needed to run DCC, necessitating the motor shield. You can run this using an Arduino Uno, but the Mega will give me more options down the line to add other features. I'm printing some enclosures for the command station but I'm having some issues with my printer at the moment and getting some rather ugly prints. For now, I'll keep it on the base the Mega came in. I need to make a small modification to the motor shield. I need to cut the trace that shares power between the Mega and the motor shield. They will each have their own power supplies and don't need shared power. I tested the continuity with my multimeter to make sure the trace was properly cut. Next, I installed the motor shield on the Mega, being careful to make sure the pins are lined up. It can be easy to bend these pins if you don't take your time. Next, I need to install the DCC EX software on the Arduino. But I've got to find my USB cable first. Where'd I put that stinking cable? They have a standalone installer, but I couldn't get it to run. I'm a Mac user and some of the security in Mac OS kept me from running it. I probably could have done a bit of tinkering to make it work, but it didn't seem like it would be worth the time. You can upload the DCC EX software using the standard Arduino IDE. And I only needed to make one small change to the config settings since I'm not using Wi-Fi on it.
the upload went quickly and easily. Before heading over to the layout to test this out, I need to add a barrel connector to accommodate the 12 volt power supply for the motor shield. There are three sets of terminals on the motor shield, one for power in and two for power out. These will connect to the main line and the programming track. For testing purposes, I'm using the DCC EX web throttle. I was able to connect to the command station, but it wasn't recognizing the decoder in my locomotive. Well, time for a little signal tracing to see if I can figure out the issue. The motor shield is recognized and will turn on and off. This is indicated by the set of LEDs on the board. I'm getting 12 volts DC on the input pins on the motor shield. That's good. I'm getting a bit over 10 volts AC on the main line output pins. This is about the expected voltage on this system. I'm getting about the same reading on the rails themselves. Still, all good. So, I opened up my loco to check the decoder. I found that the main wiring harness was loose, so I reseated it. And that seemed to fix it. However, in the process of reassembly, I severed a speaker wire. So, I ordered a replacement speaker wire harness and waited for it to arrive. Once it came in, it only took a few minutes to solder it on the speakers. I took a bit more care reassembling the tender this time. Now I got it back on the layout and did some testing with the web throttle. So far, so good. 
Now I'm going to set up JMRI on a Raspberry Pi. For those unfamiliar, JMRI is a suite of software used for controlling a model railroad with a computer, and a Raspberry Pi is a miniature computer. I started by installing the base operating system on a micro SD card for Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi has a very simple installer for this process, and you can even do a bit of pre-configuration on the device with the installer. Once this is done, I load the SD card in the Pi and boot it up. Before I can install JMRI, I need to install Java. The Pi runs a Linux operating system. So I opened up the command line terminal and typed in sudo apt git update. apt is basically a program that installs software over the internet. The update command tells it to update its information about the software that is available for download. Then I ran apt install default-jdk. This will install the behind-the-scenes software, Java, that allows JMRI to run. Then I downloaded JMRI. It downloads as a .tgz file, a compressed file format similar to .zip. Once downloaded, I extracted it. Now, I'm ready to connect the Raspberry Pi to my DCC EX command station using the USB port. Then, I opened up Decoder Pro. JMRI is really a suite of programs that work together, and Decoder Pro is the software you use to program your decoder. I've never really used JMRI before, so I'm learning as I go. On first launch, Dakota Pro will walk you through the initial setup, basically choosing which command station you're using and how it's connected. Next, I added my locomotive to the roster and added a little basic information. Then I turned on Y throttle, which will allow me to control my locomotive using an app on my iPhone. Now, Let's try a little basic operation. Looking good. Now, I'm going to wire up the programming tracks. I'll be using some terminal blocks like I did for the main line. And I'll be using yellow and blue color coding for my programming track.
I'll eventually add a physical switch to change the programming track back and forth between programming and operation. But for now, I'm just going to hardwire it in. Now, I'm going to program the decoder. My buddy Keith from the Frisco forum sent me an XML file containing his recommended setup for this locomotive, saving me a ton of time and research. It's always great to have more knowledgeable friends in this hobby. I deleted the initial roster entry I created for this loco for testing, and then quit Decoder Pro. Then, I copied the XML file into the folder holding the JMRI settings. On Linux, this is a hidden folder in the home directory named .jmri. Next, I opened Decoder Pro and selected File, Rebuild Roster. I quit and then reopen Decoder Pro and the new roster entry appeared. I then opened up this new roster entry for programming. For good measure, I reset the decoder to factory settings. Then I went to the CV tab and clicked on Write Full Sheet and waited for Decoder Pro to write the new CV values. All right, let's test it out. Well, other than a few self-inflicted problems, this whole process has really been pretty simple. Thanks for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please leave me a like. It's the easiest way to support me and my channel. Subscribing is great too. If you've got any feedback or comments, please leave them below. I really enjoy hearing from you guys. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook, and you can find those links in the description along with a list of tools, supplies, and resources I use. In my next video, I think I'm going to be over at the workbench. I'd like to work on some rolling stock. So please join me again next time as I continue modeling the White River Line. Thank uh you. -huh.